Right now, Badger Nation is ready to take on the James Madison Dukes in New York tonight. Also, it was a day four of the Wagner trial. We have the very latest from court. And springtime snow hit southern Wisconsin this morning and more precipitation may be heading our way. News 3 now at 5.30 starts right now. Well, March Madness is in full swing, and Badger Nation is set to take on the James Madison Dukes at 8.40 tonight. News 3 now has live team coverage of the big game. First, let's kick things off with our sports director live from New York. It's Zach Hanley. Hi, Zach. Hey, guys. Yeah, maybe we should do Saturday Night Live tomorrow. That will give us something to do in the city tomorrow. But tonight, as you mentioned, it's game day. Wisconsin looking to keep their season alive and advance to the second round of the tournament. Just have to get past JMU, a 12 seed. The Badgers, of course, are a 5 seed. And it doesn't matter how they do it. Ugly, blowout, close one, gritty, not pretty, as Greg Gard likes to say. Just get it done because, as they say in March, it's all about surviving and advancing. Now, if you're not in Brooklyn, the next best place to watch the game might just be back home in Madison at State Street Brats, and that's where we find our very own Braden Ross, who's there with a bunch of Badger fans, too. Hey, Braden. Yeah, you are right, Zach. This is probably one of the best places to watch the game in Madison. I'm here with the general manager of uh, Steve Street Brats, Molly McGilligan. So tell me a little bit about what you've been doing to prep. You have a few really big games coming tonight, women's hockey and men's basketball. What have you guys been doing to get ready? Yeah, we've been getting together all of our cheese curds, our ranch, red brats, white brats. We got it all for everyone. We're excited to have some students that are left over from spring break and all the rest of the community here tonight for some games. Absolutely. And you're a student, too. You're not just a manager here. You're also a student. So Tell me about what it's like to, for you to see in your senior year these two teams be in the championship. Yeah, it's always very exciting to see everyone here at Bratz, always having a good time for the games. It's always, like, really exciting for us as a crew. We are a little bit ramped up for it. Um, so excited to have people here, to have the games going good. So good luck to everyone there. <laughs> Absolutely. And we're seeing it start to fill up a little bit, but I'm sure we'll see it fill up even more. Um, how many people are you expecting? I guess you don't have to give me a number, but how are you expecting it to fill up tonight for women's hockey and then later basketball too? Yeah, for sure. The game's at 840, so we'll be opening upstairs, have everyone set for that. So hopefully we'll be all full up. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Molly. Yeah, so we will stay here, and as this fills up, we will be talking to all those fans here and bringing you the updates as they come. Obviously, tonight, once the game ends, we'll be back here on News 3 Now, and we will tell you one way or the other how fans are feeling. So, But I'll send it back to New York for, with Armand. He's talking to a few fans out there as well. There's fans, Badger fans everywhere. Hey, Braden, like you said, a bunch of Badgers coming here to New York, to Brooklyn, to the Fulton Hall. We are seeing red here. The Badgers rolling deep tonight. And let me tell you that Bucky goes across the nation. I'm joined by one man here from New Orleans who came out to New York. How are you doing, sir, tonight? I am doing great. What a great uh, day and hopefully a great weekend. And uh, I'm a Northwestern grad as well, so to be able to see the Badgers and the Wildcats is a dream come true. How many generations of Badgers do you guys have in your family? Actually, going back from my father, I was, uh, played a little basketball in Wisconsin many, many years ago. I went to law school, and my two sons uh, also went to Madison. So, you know, we're Badgers through, from Appleton, Wisconsin, so Badgers through and through. And how many NCAA tournaments have you been to? I think at least a, at least a dozen, and a couple Final Fours. And we were in, Indi we were in Indianapolis for the Badger Final Four. That was a special uh, weekend to be there. Definitely was. So since you guys have been to so many, you got to help me out here. What's your favorite cheer? Favorite cheer? Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, it's hard to beat a classic like on Wisconsin. But... Yeah, so let's start it up here. All right, you ready? Let's try, yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> on Wisconsin, on Wisconsin, plunge right through that line. Run the ball down, down the field and touchdown. I'm sure this time you rah, rah, rah on Wisconsin. Nice job, right. guys. You can't get any better Thank than you. that. And we're going to. Let's go, Badgers. There we go. We're going to hear a lot more cheers here tonight as the band comes in here in a little bit ahead of that Final Four face off. Sorry, NCAA face off. For now, I'll send it back to you guys in the studio. Armand, thank you. And so not too far from New York, the Badgers women's hockey team is about to take on the Colgate Raiders. Our Andrew Banstra is there. Andrew?
Tonight on News 3 Now, I'll bring you full coverage from the Women's Frozen Four here in Durham, New Hampshire, as Wisconsin chases their eighth national championship. Got a lot of Badger stuff happening, so you want to stay tuned right here to News 3 Now and CBS. Well, Southern Wisconsin woke up to snow this morning, and another wet weather system is headed our way. Let's talk with Jacob, who's outside on the backyard patio. Hi, Jacob. Hey, Charlotte. This morning was a wake-up call that it can still snow in Southern Wisconsin in late March. We really haven't seen any kind of snowfall over the last few months, but today that all changed. Now, as we look at the current radar, all the snow has cleared out of our area to the east and is currently impacting a lot of Michigan and other parts of the Great Lakes. But taking a look at how much snow we did see last night and this morning, we saw around six and a half inches in Fort Atkinson. That was the highest report in our area. But near Milwaukee, there were reports up to seven to eight inches. A lot of Dane County saw around three to five inches. Madison specifically saw 4.2 inches of snow. Northern counties didn't see quite as much as we did here in the central, eastern and southern portions of our area. But we have another alert day, this time for mostly rain and wind, not necessarily the snowfall. And this will be for Sunday night into Monday. We also could see possibly an isolated thunderstorm as we are going to see a decent amount of rainfall. Now, temperatures for the most part are also going to remain cool, but I'll have full details on the forecast for this alert day and the 10 day forecast as a whole coming up a little bit later. Well, that unexpected snow may be annoying for some of us, but for those at the sledding hill, it created perfect conditions. Our Maddie Himes went out to see who was celebrating their snow day. We're here at Tollefson Park in Verona, where kids are enjoying what could be the last snow day of the school year. And I am too. School may have been closed, but students made their way to campus anyway to use the hill behind the building, of course. Got some end of the season sleds that we were able to break out. Go. And with a winter of unlikely highs and lows, kids told us Friday was long overdue. They've only really gotten to sled once this year because it's just like the snow has been so unpredictable. Uh -oh. I've been sledding here a few times, but um, this is my first time in a little while because of it was hot and now it's cold. Not sure how long the flurries would last. Kids at the hill spent every minute racing one another, building snowmen, and yes, eating some of the snow. Parents told us they didn't mind either. Friday's weather will make their upcoming spring break trips feel even warmer. Kids at the hill tell me they can't wait for the next snow day. Reporting in Verona, Maddie Heimsch, News 3 Now. If you are struggling with your heating bill, Alliant Energy is encouraging customers to reach out to them. The company's disconnection moratorium ends on April 15th here in Wisconsin, but households can still apply for additional funds through its assistance program. Alliant Energy's low income home energy assistance program helps families pay their heating bills. A representative with the company says they understand the financial pressure many families are facing, and the last thing they want to do is shut off anyone's service. Well, today was day four of the Mark Wagner trial. DCI agent Mark Wagner is charged with endangering the public when he fired on the suspect as part of an arrest operation involving multiple agencies. We'll tell you what happened in court today after the break. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. Brought to you by Ruber Law Offices. Every single day, we help families that have been tragically impacted in truck crashes. And you'll never pay us a fee until we win your case. Truck crash? Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. Stop whitening your smile the old-fashioned way with strips and trays that can take 30 minutes to an hour. I'm Jonathan Greenhut, the CEO of Paraswabs. When I met Dr. Ginnaker and he introduced me to Paraswabs and I saw how effective they were and how easy they were to use, I knew we had to share it with the world. Paraswabs was clinically studied to whiten natural teeth as well as stained caps, crowns, and veneers. It's so effective, it works on stains caused by coffee, tea, red wine, 
and even smoking. For those of you who have that one stained tooth, Power Swabs can target that area using swab precision. The first time I tried it, I was so surprised. My husband was so excited that he wanted to run out and get it. And he said, I can't believe how white your teeth are. From that point on, I've been sold. Order Power Swabs and receive up to 50% off the retail price. And as an added bonus, get a free quick stick pen with your order. Dial the number on your screen or visit powerswabs.com today. Go long. That's a championship lawn. Be ashamed if some weeds took the title. <laughs> nice hit, Johnson. Are you sick and tired of your lawn getting sacked by weeds? Then sign up with Weed Man to help you achieve a lush, green lawn that stands up to weeds. Did I mention that it was kid and pet friendly? Tackle weeds on your home turf with Weed Man. Call or click today. News 3 Now brings you a preview of Wisconsin spring elections, what you need to know before heading to the polls on April 2nd. Plus analysis from both sides on the key issues today and moving forward to November. Campaign 2024, Battleground Wisconsin, Tuesday at 6.30. You're watching News 3 Now at 5.30, moving forward. The trial of a state DCI investigator involved in the shooting of Quadron Wilson two years ago wrapped up its first week today. Mark Wagner is facing public endangerment charges. He's accused of firing on Wilson back in February of 2022 as part of an arrest operation on Madison's Far East Side. Wilson was wanted on drug charges when a number of agencies worked to arrest him. Warner's, Wagner's rather defense team was argued, has argued Wilson was shooting at him, so he fired back using force common in Wisconsin law enforcement agencies. Now on the stand today for the prosecution was another DCI agent, now retired, who explained one of those tactical positions. Wagner's trial is expected to continue through at least next week. Wisconsin Congressman Mike Gallagher says he is resigning his office in a month. That will hand another blow to Speaker Mike Johnson and his razor thin Republican majority. Gallagher represents the 8th District in Northeast Wisconsin and his last day will be April 19th. The House already has three vacancies left by two Republicans and one Democrat. Congress is moving forward on steps to avoid a last minute shutdown. The House passed a bill to keep the government open and the Senate is expected to follow suit this evening. But even though the measure passed with bipartisan support in the House, it may come at a price for Speaker Mike Johnson. Willie James Inman has more details from Capitol Hill. The Senate has begun debate on a bill to fund the government for the rest of the year and avoid a shutdown which is set to take effect at midnight. To my colleagues on both sides, let's finish the job today. Let's avoid even a weekend shutdown. The Senate let's took up the bill the after the House passed it with broad bipartisan support. On this vote, the yeas are 286, the nays are 134. The funding bill passed in the House despite stiff opposition from the right wing of the Republican Party, who say spending is too high and it doesn't address the real crisis in the country. Some will say that the Republicans are in the majority in the House, but it's clear that the Democrats own the Speaker's gavel. Because this bill... It's not a Republican piece of legislation. It's keeping the border open. The last time Republicans passed a spending bill over the objections of the far right, it cost House Speaker Kevin McCarthy his job. And history may be about to repeat itself with current House Speaker Mike Johnson. This is basically a warning. Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene filed a motion to vacate the Speaker's chair. It's time for us to go through through the process, take our time, and find a new Speaker of the House that will stand with Republicans and our Republican majority instead of standing with the Democrats. Johnson says he's not concerned. I don't operate in fear, you know. But we have to do the job and we have to go. That's what we're doing day by day. House members are going on a two-week recess, which could give Johnson time to convince Green to withdraw the motion. Willie James Inman, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Green did not file the motion to vacate as a privileged motion. Had she done so, the House would have been required to vote on the measure within two days. And with a very thin majority in the House, it would only take four Republicans voting with Democrats to unseat Johnson from the House Speaker's chair. So what would you do with nearly a billion dollars? If you're feeling lucky, there's a jackpot that's swelling. What you need to know before you play tonight's lottery, next on News 3 Now at 5.30. Oh.
Oh, the weather. What's the chance of rain tomorrow? Ooh, 80%. I make it rain. I make it rain. Speaking of making it rain, at Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison, we have an average 95% payout, which leads you to more chances of playing longer and more chances to win big. Play longer, win more, chances are you're gonna like it. Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison. This right here is confidence in a bottle. It makes me feel so much more confident than I've ever felt. They are some of the hottest videos on social media. Those videos claiming to instantly get rid of bags under your eyes. Annette Figueroa is here to tell us why she says this one is for real. This one is for real and I'm so excited. We even have a video and all he uses is a small amount on a clean dry face and what it does is it tightens and lifts the appearance of bags underneath your eyes and I did this to my father. We were at home, so we applied it to his under eye bags, and let me tell you, we were so excited. In under 10 minutes, they visibly disappeared from view, and now it is literally part of both of our daily routines. And not only does it work on the bags, it works on the appearance of crow's feet, fine lines, and wrinkles. At our $14.95 price, it's the best way to try Plexiderm and see it work after your first application. Your solution is at PlexidermTrial.com or call the number on your screen. At Blaine's Farm and Fleet, we get you outdoors because we get you. Whether you're ready to hit the road, tackle the yard, or start a new project, we get you the right products at the right prices. Like 36-pound bags of Estate Crabgrass Preventer, $32.99. 20-pound bags of Blaine's brand Cardinal Songbird Food, $14.99. Rewards members save an extra buck. And five quarts of Blaine's Full Synthetic Motor Oil, $23.99. Just $20.99 for rewards members. We get you outdoors because we get you. At Blaine's Farm and Fleet. This month, we're looking for 200 homeowners interested in getting a new fence. We're offering up to $1,000 off, plus an upgrade of up to 10 free solar caps. Our fences outlast wood 3 to 1 and are backed by our extensive lifetime warranty. Call now or visit the website for your new fence today. Certain this is going to work? Nothing to it. For imprint certain? Certainty matters. 4imprint is your home for promo gear to wow clients and inspire your team. Check out 4imprint.com. 4imprint for certain. You're watching News 3 Now at 5.30, moving forward. Welcome back. The Mega Millions jackpot is now close to a billion dollars with an estimated $977 million up for grabs. And that's in tonight's drawing. No one matched the five numbers and Mega Ball in Tuesday night's drawing for the $893 million prize. That's making tonight's jackpot the sixth largest in Mega Millions history. And some people are already thinking about what they would do with the money. What I'd do is I'd set a trust fund up for all my siblings and I'd give the rest of the money to the ACC, which is where I rescued my dog. I got businesses lined up ready to, ready to go. I got the plans and order ready to go. Probably give most of it away, but I mean, who in the world needs all that money? Not me. There's been no luck in the Powerball either, which means that jackpot has climbed to $750 million. The next Powerball drawing is tomorrow night. Well, springtime snow greeted southern Wisconsin this morning, and more wet weather could be on the way. Here's meteorologist Jacob Montesano, who is tracking the very latest. Jacob? Yeah, Charlotte, we are expect to see more precipitation, but we likely aren't going to see much more in the form of accumulation like we saw last night and this morning. But looking at the three things you need to know, it's going to be pretty cold over the weekend. Highs will only be in the 30s, and then we are going to see some rainfall, especially late Sunday through early Tuesday. Some snow may mix in, but again, we're not expecting accumulation. But what's diff the big difference is, uh, other than the snow, the fact that we'll see more rain versus snow, the other big difference is this next system will be very windy. We weren't that windy last night as the snow uh, was falling. Now, here's a look at the alert day information. This is Sunday night and Monday due to the rain and the wind. Now, we also could see a few isolated thunderstorms, but we aren't going to see any severe weather. Now, looking at the forecast, some snow is possible to start the system, uh, mostly uh, Sunday morning and afternoon, but that snow will transition into rain and we are expect to see some scattered showers throughout much of the day, although we are likely going to see a few breaks from the rainfall uh, during the day on Monday as we are going to see that rain continue into the evening hours as well. 
possibly even into Tuesday morning, we could see the system kind of coming to an end, but possibly even um, more rain may fall during that time. But the system will completely clear out of our area by Sunday evening, and then we are going to be dry again by Wednesday. But we also are going to be pretty windy for the system, so we're going to see those wind gusts possibly up to 40, maybe even exceeding uh, up to 45 miles per hour at times. So it definitely is going to be windy for Sunday night and Monday. And the winds will start to die down a little bit as we head towards Monday evening. But even during that time frame, we are still expect to see some breezy conditions. Now, temperatures during this whole time will be a little bit wacky. We'll see them rise Sunday night. So the high on Sunday will be 38. The low Sunday night will be right around that. As I mentioned, temperatures are going to rise during the overnight hours Sunday night and continue rising for Monday as we are going to see highs in the middle 50s. The big reason for that is, be is because all this windy weather will be coming from the south. So it will bring a lot of that warm air into our area. But the rest of the 10 day forecast fairly close to average, only slightly below and slightly above it. So a little bit of a difference from what we've seen over the last couple of months where we've had a lot of days above average this last week and the next couple weeks look to stay near average. So here's a full look at the 7 to 10 day forecast. We are expected to see more rain as well towards the end of next week as we do have a few other small systems moving through our area. But at this point, we are expecting mostly rain from those systems as well. So although we are having another alert date, this isn't necessarily for snow, but rather the fact that we're going to see a lot of rain and some pretty windy conditions on top of the rainfall. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. I'm Jonathan Lawson, here to tell you about life insurance through the Colonial Pen Program. If you're age 50 to 85 and looking to buy life insurance on a fixed budget, remember the three Ps. The three what? The three Ps. What are the three Ps? The three Ps of life insurance on a fixed budget are price, price, and price. A price you can afford, a price that can't increase, and a price that fits your budget. I'm 54 and was a smoker, but quit. What's my price? You can get coverage for $9.95 a month. I'm 65, retired, and take medications. What's my price? Also $9.95 a month. I just turned 80 and I'm on a fixed income. What's my price? $9.95 a month for you two. If you're age 50 to 85, call now about the number one most popular whole life insurance plan available through the Colonial Pen Program. Options start at $9.95 a month. That's less than 35 cents a day. You cannot be turned down because of your health. No medical exam, no health questions. Your acceptance is guaranteed. And this plan has a guaranteed lifetime rate lock. So your rate can never go up for any reason. Options start at $9.95 a month. Plus, you get a 30-day money-back guarantee. So call now for free information, and you'll also get this free beneficiary planner. Use this valuable guide to record your important information and give helpful direction to your loved ones with your final wishes. And it's yours free, just for calling. So call now for free information. Call 1-800-914-3131 for your free information and your free gift. That's 1-800-914-3131. There's no risk or obligation. 1-800-914-3131. Call now. Brooklyn, the Badger Bash still going on, and these fans are hoping to see one thing. Wisconsin put on a show in New York City because, as the song goes, that's where dreams are made of. Well, the star for Wisconsin this season has been A.J. Storr. In the Big Ten Tournament, he scored 90 points in four games. The bigger the stage, brighter the lights, the better A.J. Storr plays for Greg Gard's squad. He just loves hooping. I mean, he'll go out there, and when the when the lights get a little brighter, I feel like he plays a little better. Um, you know, it's just what he does. It's what he's born to do. So, to have him a part of this team has been special, and just to see what he does under the bright lights, it's been awesome to be a part of. That's just what he does, man. That's just the kind of player he is, the kind of guy he is. He always has that look in his eye, on and off the court. So you know, he's always locked in. 
Now, Storr did mention that he wished they were playing at Madison Square Garden because that's where he played last year with St. John's, but the Barclays Center will do. Now, as far as the Wisconsin women, they're also in action tonight, and that's where Andrew Banstra found out at the Frozen Four that this weekend could be a historic one for Badger captain Britta Curl. Welcome to the Women's Frozen Four in New Hampshire. College hockey's biggest stage is nothing new for Wisconsin. In fact, for senior Britta Curl, the fourth time is a charm. She's got a shot to become the first ever D1 women's hockey player to be a four-time national champion. Even better, Curl has never even lost a game in the NCAA tournament. And she doesn't plan to change that today when Wisco brushes up against Colgate in the semifinals. This year, I think, for her, was a year where she just came in relaxed, ready to go, knowing she uh, stays healthy, she's going to have an outstanding season in what she did. I mean, she put up numbers that uh, in most years would lead teams in scoring. To, in the back of you know people that know hockey and understand hockey, she's a big part of our team and our success this season. I'm going to try to do the little things this weekend. You know, I've tried to be consistent in that in my career, and hopefully that you know can rub off on our team and be a source of... Um, you know, solid consistency that people can turn to. Um, just going to try to end my career and feel good about it. Curl also patrols the locker room as the team's captain and every inch of the ice. Mark Johnson calling her a 200-foot player, and the Badgers will need every inch of it tonight. Back to you from the Women's Frozen Four in New Hampshire. Thanks, Andrew. Puck drops for the Wisconsin women at 6.30. Badger men tip off in Brooklyn at approximately 8.40, and you can, of course, see that game right here on News 3 Now. For now, though, live in Brooklyn with the Badgers, Zach Hanley, News 3 Sports. Thank you very much. And Jacob is back with a look at our weekend forecast. Yeah, it's going to be pretty cold, dry for Saturday. Then we'll have that precipitation move in Sunday. Going to start out as snow, then transition to rain late Sunday. And as we get to Monday, we do have that alert day as we are going to see rainfall and windy conditions, possibly even an isolated storm or two. And as we get towards the end of the week, we are experiencing a little bit more rainfall as well. Now, I have one of the games up on my phone right here. It's a uh -huh. wild one, 75-74. Yale is beating Auburn. But I have also, we got to get a shout out to Marquette. Yes. They, they won that Thank game. Thank you. <laughs> yes. yes, they and did. I didn't go there, but I want to give a shout out to uh, my home state, well, my old home state schools, Illinois and Northwestern, both made it. Mm -hmm. Let's go off. Uh, four for four with Wisconsin and the two places I've lived. Well, actually, I technically lived in South Dakota and they got destroyed, but Where beyond the point. Where hasn't he lived, so, right? Yeah, so. Go Marquette and go Badgers. Yeah, I've been having this on a, this just kind of on my phone, like on the side during the whole show. So it's a pretty, pretty crazy game. Big upset You're possible. You're not the only one, I'm sure, who's doing yeah. that too at work. All right. I, I love March Madness. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is going to do it for us. Thank you so much for joining us. And don't forget, News from Now at 10 will be on after the Badger game right here on CBS. Have a great evening.